Hello, this is Brian Resney, President of Resney Wealth Management. I'm bringing you an important update about the economy and the investment market so you can better understand what we see in the global landscape. You know, we looked at the uh, PMI numbers and the industrial production numbers that came out over the last couple days, and of course, more improvement for the U.S. economy and over in Europe. These are all positive numbers. This tells us one thing. The economies around the world are slowly getting better and better. I've talked about this repeatedly over this uh, last year. As we end or get close to the end of 2014, of course, we're seeing many of the U.S.-based markets, you know, close to new highs. Now, one of the things I want to discuss is we send out updates not only to our clients, but it comes on our website. And a lot of the potential clients of Resident Wealth Management also receive some of our updates. Our market trend indicators, are, or our MTIs that we call it, we have a short-term, an intermediate, and a long-term market trend indicator. We also have uh, ancillary extreme short-term indicators that show up on some of the charting that we send out to clients on a regular basis. Just because some of those extremely short-term indicators are showing a negative, this is basically what we call a back and fill. No markets, regardless of the stock market, the bond market, gold, housing, oil, it really doesn't matter. No markets go straight up and none of them come straight down. It's more like a stair-step fashion. So when we look at our extremely short-term indicators, we use these primarily as kind of pivot points or buy points when we're going to add new capital back into the portfolio. These very short-term indicators are really just more of a, a short-term signal for us on adding allocation back to various sectors. When we start looking at our short-term market trend indicators and our intermediate and our long-term, these are more representation of what's going on over the short intermediate and long term and these are a little bit more important for the average consumer. When we look at our short term this is basically just really a warning sign that hey we're getting a little bit of a pullback. It's kind of like going up four or five steps coming back one or two. Going up four or five steps coming back one or two. When we start to get into our intermediate and our longer term indicators, our market trend indicators, these are when you start to see bigger pullbacks. Going up four or five steps coming back three or four steps as an example. So we look at these, of course, as, as pivot points, not only for buy and sell criteria at Resident Wealth Management, but more importantly, we're looking at the relative strength of various sectors that we do own. And we want to own those relatively uh, strong sectors, not over the next week or two weeks, but over typically months and quarters and possibly years, depending how strong they stay. Now, while we continue to see strength in the U.S. marketplace, more so in the small and mid cap this year, and of course followed by the large cap, we do own a helping of emerging markets, which started to come back, uh, falter just a little bit, and basically are starting to revamp some of their strength again. None of these indicators are fail-proof. What I mean is you're going to have short-term pullbacks in all of these indicators. And this is going to be expected over short-term market cycles. Over the intermediate and long term, these tend to soothe themselves out. And these are very good representations of where I feel we're going to see strength continued in the current U.S. marketplace. And hopefully we continue to see this resurgence in the emerging market. While I talked about the improvements in not only the, the manufacturing data in the U.S., but also in, in Europe, emerging market economies are actually doing quite well. In fact, if you look at most emerging market economies, generally speaking, uh, their GDP growth is more than double or triple what the U.S. is, and often three or four times more than what Europe is. These are very good proxies for world growth, and I firmly believe as we head into 2014, we're going to see great opportunity for increased uh, performance. Now remember folks, at any point, we could easily see a 5 or 10% correction in any investment sector over the next quarter. Easily we could see that. Do I expect it? Right now, no. But will it happen? Yes, eventually. Statistically speaking, we have 5 to 10% corrections in almost any investment sector, not just the stock market, but bonds, gold, oil, and you name it, each sector has them. Usually 5 or 10% corrections happen at least once to three times per year. 2 to 5% of pullbacks in almost any sector occur almost a dozen times a year. Again, not just the stock market, but if I look at long-term treasuries as an example, year-to-date, they're down about 12 to 14% negative year-to-date. I'm glad to say we do not own any long-term treasuries. In fact, those are one of the weaker sectors along with gold year-to-date. We avoid relative weakness. 
We own relative strength. Of course, if you're a client and you have a question about your portfolio, give us a call. If you're a concerned investor and you're not a client of Wealth Management and you want to start 2014 off on a positive note, it's time for a positive change. Call our office for a consultation. We always like taking on new clients who are nice people to do business with. Make sure you have yourself a safe and profitable week.